guys, how's it going? It's Al. It is finally time. We are here. The kickoff event on DraftKings for week one of the 2021 DFS NFL season. Thursday night football between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to break down this entire game, single game showdown slate for you, as well as show you how to use a lineup builder to help you construct your lineups and your correlations and what rules you should use to try and help you have a better chance to win the tournament, whether you're holding hands with a bunch of people or hopefully be able to do it solo to differentiate your lineups a little bit differently from previous years so that you can hopefully have a chance to take down the top prize in this massive Thursday night tournament. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, leave me a reply, and let me know how excited you are for the 2021 football season. And let's get to it. He's a legend. All right, guys, I am completely excited about the fact that we are about to kick off the NFL season, but I wanted to let you know that these videos for Single Game Showdown, we always kind of preview the Fantasy Labs lineup builder that they use because I think that it's the easiest for uh, a new user, somebody who has really not used lineup builder before, it's very easy to build out rules. I'm going to show you how on this video. There's going to be a link down in the description. Just click that one, smizzle.tv slash labs with a capital L at the beginning of labs. There'll be a link right down below. Pin comment, go click it, support the people that support this channel. All right, so getting to the game, right? Like we have a, a ridiculous, this game has a total over 50 points, a lot of offense expected. Yes, Tampa Bay has basically everybody back on both sides of the football. The entire offense is there, so we know what to expect from them. On the other side of the ball, the Dallas Cowboys, the Fantasy Carnival should theoretically be back in town with this really high-powered offense and really, I don't know how to put it nicely, very friendly uh, defense. Tampa Bay's defense, not as friendly. Dallas's defense, extremely friendly. Uh, we like that for fantasy purposes. We always have liked that. We always will like that when it comes to fantasy and DFS because Dallas's defense can't stop anybody, which means that points get scored against them. Whether they're winning, uh, you know, teams get to keep up with them or whether uh, the other team gets out ahead and now Dallas has to throw a ton. So it leads to a lot of fantasy scoring in all of these games, especially on DraftKings where PPR and bonuses are in play. So in terms of single game showdown, what rules do we want? First of all, we want to make sure uh, that we're correlating our lineups, right? So anytime I play a quarterback I want to, uh, in captain, sorry, anytime I have a quarterback at captain, I want to make sure that I have at least two of their pass catchers along with them. And if it's like a super high powered pass catching back like uh, CMC, right? Somebody who's going to get like over 20% of the market share of targets. I'll include the running back in that sort of a, a stack as well, but I'm not going to force it with somebody like Ezekiel Elliott, especially with rumors being that they're going to uh, pull back on his role a little bit. this year. He's still going to have really heavy volume, really high volume, especially uh, those inside the five carries. So he's been one of the league leaders over the last three or four seasons, every single season. He is basically getting like 18, 20 plus carries inside the five yard line, but he doesn't exactly correlate perfectly with Dak Prescott. So the second rule here is that I'm probably not going to allow a high percentage of quarterbacks in the captain spot, albeit guys like Tom Brady and Dak Prescott can put up really ceiling games. The opportunities for them to put up a ceiling game is a little bit lower. A ceiling game for a quarterback is like 30, uh, maybe 35 points. You get that one and a half X when it comes to uh, the captain spots, you'll, you know, get 50% more points when they have a game like that. But a ceiling game for a position player, you're talking like 40, 45 points. So in the case that the ceiling play is that other position, we've really only seen like 15% all time showdown winning lineups come with a quarterback in the captain spot. But the percent that the field plays at captain in those tournaments is way higher. So I like to limit my captains, maybe seven or 10% of each quarterback at captain. But assuming that we're going to play Tom Brady at captain, we want to use two of his pass catchers with them. So we're going to build a group uh, or at least a rule that's going to force all of these guys to be in that lineup if we're going to build multiple lineups. So let's take a look at the Buccaneers from last year. This is their, uh, we're looking over at nflsavant.com, a really good just a stat site. You can get this information basically anywhere, but I love the viz that they have to kind of show you guys 
where the targets go in this offense. So like Mike Evans got 18% of the target market share, Godwin with 13.9, Gronk with just over 13. Antonio Brown, I think, is going to take a a pretty solid bump from this 9% over the course of an entire season because he didn't play the full season last year. This is where most of the targets are going to go in this offense. Assuming health for these four cats right here, I'd probably expect like, I don't know, 65 to 75% of the targets to go to these four dudes. Yeah, we're going to get some running backs sprinkled in there. You're going to get a little Cam Bray. You're going to get a little OJ Howard. You're going to get a little Scotty Miller. But like when these three wide receivers and Gronk are healthy and playing, the majority of the targets are going to go to these guys. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we build a group with Tom Brady and the pass catchers that you want in lineups that have Tom Brady as the captain. So let's isolate to Tampa Bay and we're going to take Evans. I'm going to make sure that Godwin, I'm going to make sure that uh, Brown and Gronk are in there. I'm also going to allow, because there is correlation, especially in showdown, and with as few points are scored in showdown, if you want to have a kicker correlated with the captain, that's fine with me. Uh, so using Tampa Bay's kicker is fine. You want to include him in that group. You also want to include uh, any pass catchers that you're going to think are going to play major time. So like Scotty Miller uh, or the other tight ends on this team. OJ Howard, Cam Brate, you can plug them in there. Now here's the point in the video where we're going to get a whole bunch of new players that don't and, and don't actually watch the video, right? They're not going to listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. And they're about to type in the reply because they just scroll through the timeline looking for where the lineup is and go, you know, streamer, you can't play. Uh, you have to play somebody from Dallas on the other side. Look for those replies uh, down below. Those are always fun. Guys that don't actually watch the video, but they just scroll looking to copy and paste the lineup from like a, a YouTube video. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. So I'm glad that you guys are actually listening. So that's the group type thing that we're going to build for Tom Brady. Same thing goes for uh, our Dallas group, right? So if we're going to build a lineup with Dak Prescott at captain, we're going to build a group with basically all of his pass catchers. I'm not going to include Ezekiel Elliott in that group. I will include Cooper, Lamb, Gallup. We can take a look at NFL Savant for their targets from last season. And again, this one is going to be a little bit screwy because... Dak Prescott only played a third of the season. So if he played like, you know, six, five, six games, five and a half games, the rest of this is with like Andy Dalton and the, the Italian restaurant and everything else. These should bump is basically what I'm saying. But Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup are the top three. You also were missing Blake Jarwin last year, and he was filled in uh, very well, by the way, by Dalton Schultz, who is supposed to be just an inline guy, but caught the ball exceptionally well on the 89 targets that he got. Yes, we did get some targets from Ezekiel Elliott. I think these are going to come down slightly unless the offense is on the field as much or throwing the ball as much as they were during the Dak Prescott games as opposed to after that when they weren't throwing it as much. Tony Pollard should see a slight uptick. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott a slight downtick in terms of his usage in the passing game as Pollard matures and they kind of want to get him on the field, especially in the passing game. Uh, it might be more of like a an old Green Bay split between like Aaron Jones and and Williams this year on the targets as opposed to where Zeke ate up the vast majority of snaps and running back touches. It may not happen. That seems to be the route that it's going. We're, we're going to have to see a few games and see the percentage of snaps that Zeke plays this year versus previous years. I'm just saying be on the lookout for that if it does happen. But these three guys are basically the main guys. Dalton Schultz was number four with 14.2% of the market share. I don't really think that he's going to maintain that this year if Blake Jarwin is healthy, considering, you know, for more than like one quarter. And if we look at their red zone targets last year, the vast majority of those went to Michael Gallup, uh, which is surprising that he got 19 of them and led the team with as disappointing a season as he had in all of our own minds, right? He was not really a consistent guy. He was not somebody, like, he had some good games, most of them chasing where he'd get like a long catch late. But like the amount of red zone and end zone usage that he got on this team was awesome. I think CeeDee Lamb's going to take a bump in terms of his red zone and end zone looks this year, as opposed to the 14.7% that he got last year. I can kind of slide it up here and show you 14.7%, or I can just do this. So this was the red zone targets that they got last year, pretty even among that main four, that core four of players that we saw. So building out our Dak Prescott group, we start there. I think it's Jarwin over Schultz. If you think that Jarwin is not going to play as many snaps early in the season as he would later in the season then go with Schultz over Jarwin I'm going to include both in the group and I'll just wait one up or wait one down 
Fanny Slabs has the option for you to put a flame next to the player, up to three of them, or a snowflake next to the player, up to three of them, how much you kind of want to boost or uh, downgrade that player. We will be including uh, Zerline in that, and if you want to take a lower, you know, snap percentage guy to put in there, go for it. Uh, these are the guys I'm going to force uh, the optimizer to use with Dak Prescott. Now, the next rule we're going to make uh, is to include other players, right? We have to include somebody from the other team uh, in all these lineups. So if I have like a wide receiver at captain, right? Like this is this is another rule that we have to build out. If I have Mike Evans as my captain, knowing that Mike Evans in terms of red zone looks last year on the Buccaneers was right there, him and Gronk, obviously. The two big guys that have great contested catches that are massive targets and typically have a mismatch against uh, defensive backs that are guarding them or linebackers in Gronk's case that are guarding him. Brady's just going to throw the ball to those guys because they have a higher chance of catching those balls, right? So like 57% completion rate in the red zone, 21 targets for Evans, eight on 21 for Gronk. Big touchdown upside here in terms of 12 completions for nine touchdowns in the red zone last year for Mike Evans. So if Mike Evans is my captain because touchdowns are so important, in showdown in fantasy specifically, but like the smaller the game type gets, the smaller the sample of games that we get. And in showdown, you get like one, you have to have the guys that score the touchdown. So maximize your opportunity to get the players that get the most percentage of end zone and red zone targets. So every lineup that has Mike Evans as a captain, I am going to make sure that Tom Brady is in that lineup. So basically you're going to build a rule that does that. I will show you how to do that. That goes for the uh, same for the other side. Anytime that I have like Amari Cooper as my captain, who has looked good in late practices, even though he missed some time early in camp, I think that he's going to be just fine in terms of his route running and uh, just overall ability. But uh, we're going to tie Dak Prescott to him. Same thing goes. You guys know that uh, how big I've been on CD Lamb this entire draft season. I think that the, this kid is going to absolutely blast off this season. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who draws the most coverage from Tampa Bay because you can narrative and, and story tell your your lineup in that first game here on Thursday night because of how diverse the Dallas offense is well you know if Cooper and Lamb and uh Gallup are out there and this year they're not going to tie CD Lamb to the slot you're gonna have to see where these guys go uh, and they're gonna move them around a lot more to try and get different opportunities with Lamb more on the outside than he has been last year Cooper seeing some time in the slot a little bit Gallup seeing more time in the slot uh, this season, they're going to get a little bit more creative with that Dallas offense. Now, if I have a captain that's going to be a running back, uh, there's going to be other things that we're going to do here as well. I'm probably not going to play the opposing defense uh, or not allow the opposing defense to be in lineups where Ezekiel Elliott is the captain. With as many in zone, or sorry, uh, inside the five carries as somebody like Ezekiel Elliott gets, he makes for a great captain play. If you are scripting this for... Dallas to be winning and right now this game I believe that Tampa Bay is a, a pretty solid favorite and at home I typically would not want to do that unless you're saying look Dallas is going to come out and blow the doors off here uh, and this is going to be a little bit contrarian as good as Tampa Bay was against opposing running backs but if we build a lineup because I don't think there's really a viable captain running back on Tampa Bay uh, for this first game because it's just such a muddled back unless Geo's out then you have a less of a muddled backfield but if you have Ezekiel Elliott as a contrarian captain play in this spot with as much usage as he gets and as much touchdown upside as he has anytime they get inside the five-yard line because of how much they've fed him the ball in past years, I'm probably going to think that if, if I'm building out that game script, that Tampa Bay's defense is not going to go with him. So you've got to not allow that in your lineup builder. Now, the last thing that I do here uh, for the lineup builder is I make sure that I don't want to have multiples. I'm not going to have a kicker or a captain at all, right? That's first. I'm not going to have a kicker captain. I'm not going to have a defense captain, especially in a game like this one where uh, I expect a lot of offense. Your defense and captain's lineups, in my opinion, this Thursday are going to be drawing dead unless something crazy happens, like they score two touchdowns and the amount of time that that's going to happen versus the amount of time, the amount of percentage that is going to be on those teams in captain is overblown so like if that's a one percent possible outcome that this that one of the two defenses will have two touchdowns but like 10 percent of the field is going to play them in captain they're massively overplaying the chance so you want to be on the right side of the math and not the wrong side of the math so for games like this i tend to avoid that 
uh, and I'm also probably going to only allow one of the four defenses and kickers to be in any one lineup. So let's go take a look over at the optimizer here. We're going over to Fantasy Labs. We look at position. You can go to settings and set the, the rules that you want. These are basically all the rules that we talked about. Pair your captain quarterback with at least two of the wide receivers, tight ends, and kickers from the same team. Pair your captain quarterback with at least one of the position players from the opponent, right? We talked about every lineup has a maximum of five plus one. You have to have five of one. You don't have to. You can have a maximum of five. You must have one from the other team. I don't want it to be a kicker or a defense in those five plus one scenarios. So I force it to be one of the position players, whether it's a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, or tight end. Pair a captain wide receiver with exactly the quarterback from the same team. Pair the tight end with the quarterback from the same team. Limit. You can tell it to just limit things. You have the choice of pair or limit in these rules. Limit to, at most, one defense and kicker from the same game. This was the last rule I talked about. There's four of them. I only want one maximum to be in any lineup, uh, and I tend to weight them down. I don't want a ton of defense or kickers in a lot of my lineups. And limit to, at most, two of the running backs from the same team because a team like the Buccaneers might have three guys that pop in a game like this uh, with Geo and Fournette and uh, Rojo where – Based on their points per dollar versus the salary, a lineup builder might stuff three running backs from the same team into the same lineup, and the likelihood of that actually helping you uh, is probably not going to be the thing. The last thing that I want to talk about here, and this is something we didn't talk about last year, is if you want to differentiate your lineup, a lot of people like to try and do it uh, by using less salary, and I don't like to do that personally. Like I don't, I don't want to do anything like that. I don't want to just say, well, I'm going to leave like five thousand on the table, and that's going to make my lineup different from everybody else, right? So, like when you look at the uh, the salaries, like okay, I'm just going to say, well, make lineups that have a maximum of forty-two thousand spent, I'll leave eight thousand on the table, or something ridiculous. That's that's not how I roll. I would rather build a group into the optimizer. Uh, if I click settings here, I can build a group. Once you identify, maybe five or six guys that you want to target, they're going to be lower than 10 or 5% played in this tournament. Add a group, use uh, at least or exactly, whichever one you want, one of your entire list of players. Now, when you look at these lists of players, they're labeled captain. You want to make sure they're not labeled captain. Uh, just regular would be them in the flex. So like pick four or five guys that you think are going to be low percentage players and force at least one of them you know, exactly one or at least one into your lineup, that will already force the builder to put somebody that is a lower percent play into those lineups, giving you a lot more differentiation than just spending less money and not getting the best plays into your lineup. So immediately you're going to differentiate by doing that. So let's take a look. Let me get rid of that rule since I didn't build it out yet because, you know, it's only Sunday. Uh, when I'm recording this video, and I, I clearly don't have everybody. We're going to build our 150 lineups. We're going to sort not by projected points because I don't want the median. I want the ceiling. I want to know exactly what we're going to get out of these lineups. I want uh, to attack the top of the tournament. Min cash is not what we want to do. Uh, we're going to take our exposures here. We're going to sort by captain. You can see that it's already giving us Antonio Brown as our highest captain, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper. Uh, I've maxed Tom Brady and Dak Prescott to 10 percentage. Uh, at captain to make sure that we don't have a ton of those captains. Here you can see some of the lineups that had already built for us. It's an amazing tool. You get a fantastic discount uh, by using that link that's down below in the description. So thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Welcome to the season. If you're new, subscribe. Click that notification bell. I'm going to come out with eight videos, seven days a week. I can't do more than seven days a week this football season. Thank you guys for being here. Got a ton of tutorials on the how to win on DraftKings playlist on the channel. Like the video, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Bye. He's a legend.